Hi, welcome to Take 5, a daily Bible time studying the New Testament by chapters. Today is April 15th and we're in John chapter 10. I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he shall be saved. John 10 verse 9. This is the third of the seven I am spoken by Jesus as recorded in the Gospel of John. The first was Christ being the bread of life, followed by his being the light of the world. The fourth I am is also in this chapter in verse 11. Christ says that he is the good shepherd. What is meant by him being a door and a good shepherd? There's nowhere in the New Testament that there is said to be any other way to heaven but through Jesus. The sixth I am statement declares, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. The Old Testament testifies of there being an intercessor, a Messiah who would come. Jesus fulfilled every one of the prophecies regarding this coming Messiah. God initiates the need for a Savior at the time of the first sin. He shall bruise you on the head, and you shall bruise him on the heel. These words spoken by God to the serpent, the devil in disguise, God will crush the head of the evil one due to his role in the fall of man for, and for his own prideful rejection of God. The role of the Savior is revealed by Isaiah. He would take our sins upon himself, but he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The, in, the chastening for our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging, we are healed. Were it, not, were it for his own sins, he was punished and crucified. He could not have been our Savior, but Jesus never sinned. The author of Hebrews writes that Christ was tempted in all things, and as we are, yet without sin. This seems impossible for us to imagine how someone could live without having ever sinned, for we feel so vulnerable to temptations. We don't feel able to resist, and many times we do succumb. And it is our sins that separate us from God. By his life example, Christ teaches us what can be accomplished through the filling of the Holy Spirit. This Spirit-filled life becomes ours once we enter into God's presence through the door, Jesus Christ. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Jesus teaches us in Revelation, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and will dine with him and he with me. Jesus bids us to enter into his presence. And, through, and though he extends the invitation, it is we who must open the door. Eternal life with, of heaven with God is a gift of God received through the yielding, the giving over our life to Jesus as our Savior. Jesus is the door, the entry into the presence of God. Secondly, he is the good shepherd. In verse 11, we read, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. This is how Jesus describes his primary role as shepherd, one who will lay down his life for the sheep. Returning to Isaiah, we read, like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a sheep that is silent before its shears. So he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and as for his generation, who considered that he was cut, off, cut out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people, to whom the stroke was due. Christ was cut off from the, the living by dying for transgressions due to people who deserved the penalty of death. Jesus has served as the sheep of sacrifice. His blood sp spilled out so we may receive forgiveness of our sins. Jesus, the good shepherd, was willing to lay down his life for us, as he here continually points out in this passage. As in the prayer Christ spoke in John 17, Christ here speaks of us. I have other sheep which are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will hear my voice, and they will become one flock with one shepherd. We are the other sheep for whom Christ died, so to bring into his fold. Though we were not there to hear his speaking and to firsthand receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, as did those in Acts 2, 
We receive his teaching through the writings of John and the other gospel writers. From Paul and Peter, James and Jude, we learn of Christ by the conviction and teaching of his Holy Spirit, of which Christ says that the shepherd will call his own sheep by name and lead them out, and that they follow, for they know his voice. Do you know his voice? One thing for certain it will never conflict with the written word, for the written word is Christ explaining God to us. As you read scripture, be sure to listen, for he is speaking to you. Thanks for being here today, and now may God's grace and peace be ours as we seek to live our utmost for his highest. Have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.